Hello and greetings to another Machina Arcana stream. So first of all I will need to check if I'm live and if somebody can hear me. Can somebody say something? Uh, let me check. <clears throat> Pardon. Am I live? Oh, you're live, loud and clear. Cool, great. Thanks, Philip. <clears throat> Although I feel like shit. <clears throat> had some kind of a bug and almost like a fever and throat is aching but and it's so cold inside you know I'm in the office and they don't have any heating so I've <clears throat> but it's gonna be fine you know it creates an atmosphere a good atmosphere okay so this session is gonna be a little bit different uh, different in a way that I've tried to use some kind of uh, uh, graphical assets to help me with visualize what's happening. Yeah, Philip, you know, it's, uh, it's weekend, so they don't want to heat. But it's fine, I'm next to a very high intensity light, so it's warm enough. So yeah, as you see, the first chapter that's how we're gonna play like when we go to the next chapter we're gonna see the the illustration and the text of the chapter uh, so let's go uh, right into it uh, you might uh, see some kind of a delay because i'll need to to work with the mouse and the keyboard in order to just use the system but let's see how it goes i haven't even tried so wish me luck also this is going to be a normal session with two players uh, we're gonna have Kim and Philip playing the game with us. Uh, it's gonna be normal difficulty, difficulty setting. It's not gonna be easy. With that being said, I really don't know if I'm gonna hmm, stay alive uh, throughout the game because I would really like to show you the end game for the, the first scenario. So let's see. Uh, so the first chapter, the entrance. Uh, I already read that but let's go into the mood and uh, read once more as we stepped into the dark an uncanny gust of wind followed us in continuing on through the wide and spacious halls echoing incessantly our eyes still blinking from the polar glare adapted at last and we could see our surroundings there was scant light yet enough for us to discover ancient and complex corridors halls and rooms built by unknown hands eons ago, perhaps. What craft erected those delicate walls and exquisite pillars that rise above the precisely detailed grid of stone slabs beneath our feet? The whole space seemed to pulsate to a strange rhythm, faint and indistinct. As we embarked on our exploration of these subterranean ruins, the feeling of disquiet only continued to grow. The further we ventured in, the more it appeared that in some bizarre way the place itself became aware of our presence, and we seemed alone no longer. So we are going to play with uh, a couple of explorers. I uh, told you it's going to be Kim and Philip. So this is the, the first chapter that gonna, we're going to play with, and uh, our Explorers are here. So Philip is a crafter, Kim is a gunman. Uh, they have a standard attack, although Philip has a melee, as you can see in the first ability. For two stamina, he targets a melee unit to attack it, arcane attack it. And Kim, for two stamina, has a range attack. Philip has uh, an ability that enables him to increase his attack rolls for each upgrade or augment. And Kim has an interesting ability that lets her equip items for one stamina once she kills either a unit, so that means explorer or monster, of course. Uh, so the first chapter is going to be the entrance. So we already read through the chapter text and you see that uh, for the list of abilities there is only a place entry token there 
So we're going to do that. So the numbers are 7 for the spawn and 4 for the horror event. Before doing that, well not before, so let's first put the entry token there. Mm -hmm, like this and place our explorers here. So you can place them on top or adjacent to the entry token. So let's go and place them like this. We will also activate health and essence tick. So that you can see their health and essence. So it's going to be much easier to just focus on the map tile. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, so we are ready for our setup. Oh yeah, just so you don't think there's some kind of a magic involved. Uh, feel free, of course, to comment, to ask any questions. I will be interested to see, to hear your ideas and feedback. So we are using, uh, for now, only level 1 items and level 1 monsters. Hopefully we are not gonna see any monster level 2 yeah I think so but you never know okay so that's it so first Kim will move so she will do one two three so three stamina here and activate a chest for three stamina like that she will also gain an essence by doing that. So you see she has no one essence. And now let's check for items. Uh, she's a gunman, so, uh, so she will get one apparel. And uh, let's go with the weapon. So we have a glimpse catcher and shredders. So glimpse catcher. So like here and shredders like here and you can see monster level 2 have the same monsters as monster level 1 oh no 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 they're completely unique everything is unique in the game so you will see completely new monsters and uh, there are four levels of monsters and you can treat level 4 monsters or some kind of a mini bosses to some extent. So these are two items that I have. Uh, a glimpse catcher and shredders. Well, to be honest, I like the glimpse catcher more because it's already a, a some kind of a weapon. It's a very low weapon, just one black die, attack die. It's not much, but it's it's okay. I'll go with the glimpse catcher. And I will remove shredders and just destroy them. Okay, now for her. Oh, no, she's done. She moved three and three stamina for activating a chest. Philip is gonna activate an event space for three stamina. By doing so, he will also gain one essence. And let's see what he gets. Scrap adjustments. So, scrap adjustments. What is this item? We took out our tools and began fiddling with the strange apparatus we'd come across. We were determined to discover its purpose, for better or worse. As we twisted gears and tightened springs, we heard the resounding pop as the bizarre gadget broke into pieces in our hands. But within the obliterated scrap, we discovered something more. So this event <clears throat> has an active ability. So that means uh, as long as this event is the topmost destroyed event card, uh, explorers are going to be able to use that to use uh, ability by losing one essence and sacrificing one item in order to gain item. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that, but 
you never know. So a uh, fellow has three more stamina, one stamina to move like that, and for two stamina to close the doors. <clears throat> you might see the, the door tokens, the door standees, but uh, rest assured, the, the standees for closed doors are going to be much better and nicer. This is just by using um, actually the first edition doors in plastic stands. So, okay, so we've done our first round for Kim and Philip. Now it's time for spawning monsters. Our current number is seven for sp uh, spawn and four for horror. So first Kim rolls two, nothing happens. Now it's six, three, nothing happens, even better. But now it's five. Okay, now let's roll for horror face. Five, yes. So we will increase the master threat by one. Unfortunately, you don't see the slider. Well, just bear with me. You know, it's much better just to have a focus on, on the board and uh, it's just one number. So there is a horror event and gloom. Oh, I'm sure it's very happy event. So we tread these passageways endlessly never seeming to arrive at our destination. Whatever we achieve, we must always pay a price. Everything feels so hopeless, so impossible. The holes, the spirit, and disturb us, and our very essence is drained, leaving behind only silence and indifference. Hmm. And it's an enter's playability, so that means when this event is played, each explorer loses one essence. That's very unfortunate. So that means Kim is uh, she's on zero essence and Phil is on zero essence. Huh? That's it. And this is for round one. Uh, any questions or any feedback? Just feel free to ask. So let's go into round two. So if you can see, Kim is next to the event space. And. Philip is next, well it's not next, it's next to the exploding barrel, but I need some weapons for him. Hmm. Where are the weapons? I'll go one, two, one, two, and then for three stamina I will activate the workbench. Workbench will not give me any any essence, but it will give me four different cards, item cards. One, two, three, and four. Let's go like this. So, uh, let me now do the... So we have arcane coating. Then we have ethereal gas bomb. Then we have arcane powder and we have reflexive sextant. Okay, now let's see them. Huh. So I would like to have some kind of a thing that I can use and uh, for the arcane powder and arcane coating they are both augments so they need to be attached to something so I will not use that. Reflexive sextant seems like a very nice thing to do, uh, to, to get. So I will take that, yes, I will take reflexive sextant. Ethereal gas bomb is also very cool because you see for four stamina and uh, destroying that card, units lose one health. And that means that all the units on the whole map tile lose one health. That means explorers and monsters. But that's a really, really awesome, really awesome uh, item. And I will not destroy that. I will have the ethereal gas bomb on top, but I will use reflexive sextant. So arcane coating is gonna go away. And arcane powder. Mm. 
but the flexive sextant is gonna be used and ethereal gas bomb is gonna get back to the to the top let me try to check something if it's possible to see hmm, i'm not sure if you are able to see that but uh, the, the prototype that we've created for Essen uh, used some kind of a like sparkly iridescent paper and we really liked the the finish that it had even so that we asked the manufacturer if there is some kind of a way that they can provide us with with that <clears throat> I'm still waiting for that it should be next uh, next week if it's possible to use that kind of a paper Okay, and then for one more stamina, I will move Philip here. Reflexive sextant is uh, already in uh, in play, like to use inventory. It's being uh, as a last effect of work plan, workbench, so that's active. <clears throat> now let's go with the with Kim. You know what? She's gonna one. She has. Yeah, yeah. I really like it. One, two, three. Let's go with one, two, three, four, five, six. I need some items. And uh, that's it for our Philip and Kim. Let's spawn some monsters. Whoa, eight. That's a monster spawn. We're gonna have Saral. Not sure if you've seen that beauty before <clears throat> so he has a peculiar ability that uh, so he explodes it explodes when it dies so that's going to be important to note when you kill him well when, when you're trying to kill him don't stand in melee so he has a standee here so that was kim so it's here and uh, two health tokens for him and now Philip one huh cool nothing happens so we reduce the rating yeah thanks thanks angry AT uh, sorry I didn't catch that uh, the coloring is a little bit off here and then horror event nine yes so the threat rises it's now two and let's see we have a broken item oh, it doesn't sound too good these halls have an inexplicable way of imbuing the very air we breathe with pessimism and it obstructs every step we take in here sometimes you need to lie back and allow the current to take you but what if it only flows towards certain oblivion destroy top item card from each item deck oh too bad because our ethereal gas bomb i really really hope to have that but so that was the consumable weapon artifact and apparel now Saral he's moving one two three four that's it now it's our turn let's gain some items shall we So for three stamina, Kim will gain one essence. Kim one essence to activate the chest, and she will gain uh, an apparel and a consumable. She's gonna take the burst mail. This is a little bit, you know, slower but you know i think it's better that you have the, the better view of the cards not with me trying to all the time <clears throat> so for burst mail when you're hit 
push adjacent units one space. That's very cool. And uh, some Weaver's Egg, well, lets you restore any kind of essence, but first lose that number of health. So I will go with the Burst Mail. Some Weaver's Egg. Hmm. <laughs> no, we're gonna just remove that. <clears throat> so that's it for uh, three stamina. So for three more. <laughs> so now you see the Serral is right there, so I might take care of not being too close. One, two. <laughs> You know what? I will, for 3 stamina, equip Kim. Glimpse Catcher and Burst Mail. It's activated now and uh, it increases my will and armor by one and gives me some kind of a weapon. So I feel a little bit more, you know, a little bit more secure with some kind of a small crossbow. And Philip is gonna use uh, three stamina to activate the chest uh, event space. Oh, uh, he has also one. And let's see what we got. Cosmic races. This actually doesn't do anything. I might not read aloud just to save time see reorder master Q and restore three stamina so that's gonna be handy it's great now we are back at six stamina one two three four five yeah. Okay, that's it. Now for masters. Three, nothing happens. Rating is on five now. Ten. So we get another. So that's uh, for Philip. We have a deep one. Deep one is uh, oh, a tricky bugger. So when he enters play, you increase master threat. So now it's on four. One, two, three, four. It has an attack, a very hard attack. And uh, when it hits, there's a probability that it will increase the master threat as well. So our deep one is here, closer to Philip. First, Saral. Saral goes towards Kim. One, two, and he will, uh, no, he won't attack because he has, uh, his attack is three stamina and uh, he has only two. Deep one will go one and remove the door token, destroy it, like, like so. That's it. Now it's our turn. Can we make it so we have two essence, only two essence? Okay, so one stamina for three stamina. Activate event space. That will finally give us. So King has two essence. And we will have a trophy collector. Trophy collector is here. It's a binding event. So that means we'll, once we read it, we will put it next to Kim's player board and it will be bound to her. There is a rush of adrenaline and the spatter of gore as abominations fall in front of me. Blood pounds in my ears as the urge to hunt and kill my enemies overwhelms my being. Moments ago they wanted to rip my face to shreds, and now I find equanimity in salvaging their corpses. 
and collecting the trophies that I make a part of myself. So it's some kind of a ear necklace that she will try to create. Uh, the, the ability has three X, so that means that whenever you kill, you will put one explorer token on the card. When you have three of them, you will resolve. So you will light the chapter, decrease amount of threat by two. So that might come in really handy. Okay, now we are one, two, three. We are two stamina. One, two. Actually, like. No, no, she will s stop here. Yeah, she will stop here. And now it's Philip's turn. Philip will use the chapter space to progress to the next chapter. So, three stamina. One, two, three. So he has one essence and Kim has two essence. So they will combine together three essence in order to progress to the next chapter. So you will put an explore token here and we will go to the next chapter. Let me put up the next chapter. Trail of Blood. The curious ornamentation on the pillars attested to the great mastery of its creator, but should you focus on their fluid curves at length, the sinister and alien contours would force themselves to repeat endlessly in your mind. Tearing my eyes from the sight, I noticed some trinkets scattered on the floor. They resembled standard exploration equipment. Is it possible that we are not the first from our era to set foot here? My suspicions grew stronger as her advance revealed yet further signs of cult involvement. Suddenly, I lost my balance and had to grab hold of the wall for support. I ignored the cold organic feel of the stone and gazed at my feet. My heart skipped a beat when I realized I stood in a thick puddle of blood. There was no body or signs of a struggle, just a dark, sticky ooze trailing forward out of sight. We dared not look at each other, but followed it all the same. So this chapter, it's a blocking chapter. So that means we can't progress normally by activating a chapter space. But, so the second ability, 4x sacrifice 1 health, will be our goal. So you see, if we do that four times, then we will go to the next chapter. The first ability means that we can at any time, we as explorers, sacrifice one health to move up to three spaces. And the third ability is enters play ability, we will activate it right now, to move up to two spaces. I will go... I'm wondering if we should go up or left. <laughs> Let's go up. So first Kim moves, then uh, <laughs> one, two. Okay, then Philip will explore a new map tile. So he will use two of his stamina to draw a new map tile and place it in play. Okay, uh, one, two, so Philip has one more stamina, and we didn't use the reflexive sextant on the start of your turn, move up to one space, so we will do that, so one, actually no, I won't do that, no, that's it, that's for our turn, because you know, it wouldn't be fair because we were here. If I would move myself, then I wouldn't be next to the chapter space. So, no. Now for monsters. First, a new monster. No. No new monster. 
than for a horror event? No, not even a horror event. Then Saral will hit Kim. It will use two black and two white die. Three plus two is five. So yeah, she is one health down. So she is at three health now. Okay, and deep one goes one, two. Let me check. He has a range of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. No, like this. And now he can attack Kim with three black die. That's four. She has two, three, three armor. So that's a hit. So Kim is down three health. Good. So I shouldn't be pushed away. <gasps> Very good. Good job with that. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. That's a very good call. When you're hit, push adjacent units one space. <clears throat> okay, so that's it. Kim is now on three health, but all of them have zero essence. Okay, also zero essence. That's it. So now it's our turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just going towards this little area. Just let me show you like this now. It's a little bit of cash. And uh, Kim will do One, two, three, four, five, six. Next to a workbench. So that's it from their turn. Eight. A new monster spawns. A bull. He's a small little, little monster. When he goes in play look like there then he will move towards explorers and when he is hit he will move towards spawn space so he will move towards the nearest so that's kim one one two like that okay Then it's horror event two, nothing happens. It's now on three, and now it's monster's turn. First is Saral, one, two, three, four. Then it's the deep one, one, two, three, four, five, and then it's Puopoth, one, two, and he can't squeeze through them so he will just stay there hmm now it's becoming a little bit more hmm, trickier i'm thinking about something so Cyril has an armor of three and i have my glimpse catcher but it's very hard to hit that with just glimpse catcher so one idea is when uh, Cyril explodes he would damage both the deep one and Buapoth but I don't have a weapon hmm you know what I will do let me try something so one two Philip goes first two stamina to move next to workbench and then he will activate for three stamina Let's try really, really hard to get some very cool weapon. One, two, three, four. I'm using four items all to get some kind of a good weapon. 
Oh, I see. I think I see what I'm gonna get. So first is the precision scope. Then uh, it's a jagged current bit. Then it's a rogue rifle and a delayer. So these are four of my items. So precision scope, weapon can target through obstacles. I mean, that can be good, but we are looking for something that hits hard. And uh, I think it's obvious that the rifle is gonna do the trick for us. Jacket Karambit is very cool because uh, you use just for one stamina. But we need something heavier. The layer is also very cool, very cool because it's not just that it attacks, it even reduces the stamina of the target. Hmm, I'm thinking about actually going with the delayer. Hmm. You know what? I'll go with the delayer. Let's try with that. But I will put the rogue rifle on top. You never know. So the layer and Kim was the one who activated, but he will immediately give the delayer to Kim. Uh, Rogue Rifle is going to go on top. And those two items, Karambit and Precision Scope, is going to be destroyed. And now, for the last effect, Use Inventory, Philip will also give Use Inventory to Kim in order that she equips the delayer. So that's a very handy thing that you can do. So Glimpse Catcher is not equipped. Well, actually it is, because if you see, Glimpse Catcher is one-handed weapon, and so is the layer. You see why I'm using those graphical assets. I don't like this. <clears throat> but okay. So the layer and glimpse catcher are equipped. Philip has one more stamina, so he will move here. And now it's Kim's turn. Kim will try to hit Saral, of course. She will use two stamina, one white, one black die. Ah, it's a critical miss. It's one. And I need to hit three. Okay. One more. Really? Again, a critical miss. Two. Hmm. Shall I run? A good thing about, uh, about the delayer is that I've used two times on Cyril, so he has two tokens. These tokens, Kim's tokens, so that means it's on the delayer. So let's say that it's here. So Cyril has two stamina down, so that's very cool. <clears throat> so he will not be even able to hit us, but with two remaining stamina, I'm trying to hit deep one because he will hit me hard. So let's try to perfect four <clears throat> and deep one. <clears throat> sorry, is dead. So Kim has uh, one essence finally. And deep one is dead. He only had one health. Okay, so and that's it for my explorers. Now let's spawn some monsters. First, Kim. Six. No, 
it was 7, now it's 6, 3, nothing, now it's on 5, and horror event, 1, ha, nothing happens, interesting, now it's on 2, yeah, we had a lot of luck, so now it's monsters, Cyril has 4 stamina, but minus 2, it's 2, so he will just move 1 stamina here, and that's it. Buopoth will move 1, 2 stamina, he has 5 stamina, and he can attack once. White and black tie, he needs to hit Kim's armor of 3. And that's 3, that's a hit. So once we hit, of course, uh, she will push adjacent units. But let's not forget this one. When you kill, light chapter. So we killed deep one. So we have one on it. So that's it. And uh, huh, Kim is on two health. That's not good. Cyril goes one like this and Buopoth doesn't move. He's diagonal from Kim and uh, the wall is behind him. So that's it. Okay, now it's our explorer's turn. Now Philip will use his reflexive sextant on start of your turn, move up to one space, like so. <clears throat> and one, two, three. So move inside, three stamina. And with three more stamina, explore the chest to get a consumable and an artifact. Consumable. From frenetic Venom. Uh, you can see that some of those, uh, some of the items don't have uh, illustration, of course, so that's just a placeholder. Tactical manual is an artifact. Uh, it's cool because it uh, enables you to activate uh, doors and traps without using any stamina cost, and it gives you passively one will. And uh, frenetic venom is a consumable that lets you attack that lets you increase your attack roll. So actually you would first inflict a damage to yourself, but then have a greatly increased attack rolls by three this round. So this is actually very good. I'm actually gonna go with Frenetic Venom. Because in, uh, in the last turn, if I had that, it would make all the difference. So Frenetic Venom is a consumable, so it just, in my inventory and technical manual I'll remove this like so and that's it for Philip now the question is do we try and kill again I will you know I will do that so I will use the layer again to hit both Yes, first let's try to hit Bobot. He has an armor of two. So it's three, it's a hit. So he has one left less and he moves one, two. Okay, now I will try and hit Saral. So, and of course, Buopoth has movement decreased, so that's two. Hmm. You know what? I'll use one essence. I don't care. I'll use one essence in order to hit Saral. I need this. So Kim is on zero essence, but he hit, she hit Saral. Like so, he's on one health point. And Cyril is also 
slowed down. And now I will try again to hit Cyril. Please give me three, give me three. Perfect, three. So that's perfect attack now. So with rolling three, I hit Cyril the second time. So Cyril is gonna explode. And when he explodes, he attacks three white die adjacent units. He is not adjacent to Kim, so that's good. So let's see if he's gonna kill Buopov. One, two, three, four, and that's enough to kill Buopov. That's perfect. So we will gain two essence. One for Saral and another for Buopov because he died on our turn. So we gain two essence with using that. So Kim is on two essence now. Perfect. And both of these are down dead. Now let me check something. Can we go to the next chapter? So we need to sacrifice one health four times. Philip is five. Well, I could do that. Oh, we didn't get Philip one essence from the from the chest. Hmm. We can do that. Okay. Well, not completely, but let's start with two. So for two, let's put it like here. One, two. Like this. Philip is on uh, four. He will use one essence without losing. So Philip is on four health and zero essence, like so. Okay, and now it's, can we go to the next one? Let's wait one more round. Yeah, let's wait. Not gonna push our luck. So first let's see a monster, four, nothing. It was five, now it's four. And for Kim now, 10. Yes. So this one is closer. It's going to be a moon beast. It's a moon beast. He has an attack, a melee attack, and he pull two spaces. Range 3. Also when he is next to a wall, it is ethereal. He has one health and he's gonna be here. Okay, there are no walls now. Now let's go for the four event. It was four. So that is a threat that is increased now. And let's see what horror event is there. Blood in the air. So that's the eldritch writing drew us to the fountain, its uneasy calligraphy demanding our inspection. Upon our approach, the foulest smelling of liquids, the dark red of diseased blood, erupted forth, clinging to our exposed skin. This base perfume corrupted us, making our injuries immune to any ministrations. So this is a passive ability and uh, while this card is active it, our explorers will not be able to restore health that's not good okay now it's moon beast moon beats moon beast goes towards philip he has five stamina one two and he can pull yeah Zoop. So Philip is pulled next to, to Moonbeast. And Moonbeast is next to a wall. 
So that means he is ethereal and uh, Philip is not able to, to target him. Now it's our turn. A trophy collector, you can see that by killing Buopoth and Saral, we have three. Like so. So when we have three of them, then we resolve the trophy collectors. Light chapter. Decrease monster threat by two. So that's perfect. So we will have a light chapter. So this is the explore token, but the next side is light chapter. And we will put that on here. Oh, you don't even see. Just give me a second. Okay, so that's the lit chapter over there. If you remember, we can't uh, progress by just activating a chapter space. We need to sacrifice one health four times. But on the next chapter, we are going to be able to almost immediately activate and go on the next one. So, it's our turn now. Let's go with Philip first. Philip has a reflexive sextant, so on the start of his turn, he immediately goes here. I will then, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, why not? Okay, I'm on one stamina. Now I will try to go to the next chapter. So we need four of them. Kim will lose one essence. So that's Kim, she's on one essence. And Philip, so one more. And Philip will lose one health. So Philip is on three health. Like so. So now we have four, and that's it. We have uh, managed to to put four tokens on there, and let me go to the next chapter. Next chapter is chapter six. <coughs> Sorry. Pass it through. The vast echoing halls welcomed us again, beguiling us to explore the murky corridors and dead ends, to embrace the cavernous rooms <coughs> and the monstrosities prowling in the shadows. The mountain had become a desolate colossus, crooning a funeral hymn. Assisted by the illustrations and scribbled directions in the journal, we were quickly able to locate our destination. In the middle of a wall, there gaped an enormous passage, spiraling down to oblivion. A faint breeze caressed my face, carrying with it a hint of something disturbing. We glanced at each other nervously and stepped forward, hearts pounding. Hmm. Now let's see what's the ability text for it. So this is a little bit similar. So this is actually number six. So we skipped three, four, and five, just to have a shorter game. Uh, it's not a blocking chapter. So that means this lit chapter is gonna help us a lot to immediately go to the next one. So we don't need to sacrifice an essence, either as a first ability or you know doing that four times. So that's perfect. So uh, Philip has one more stamina and that's just what he needs to activate the lit chapter space and he does that. So one stamina, the chapter is done and then we go to the, well, I would say almost the, the last one and you'll see why.
disturbed the ritual. The endless stairs led us to an enormous chamber, but it was not this that caught our eye. No, it was not this room that haunts our nightmares, nor was it the macabre play acted out in front of us. At the north end of the chamber, the ritual was clearly in full force. A pile of butchered bodies formed the centerpiece of this gruesome tableau. Around a vile pyramid, several robed figures shook and chanted wildly, ululating their triumph and joy at a gargantuan chasm that stretched from the edge of their ceremony. There was never an ocean more abyssal or a black more impenetrable than that which lay before our eyes. I feared for my sanity as I fought to master nausea and terror. The darkness seemed to grow by the second, feeding itself on every scream and shriek. Older than time, stronger than death, its name is madness. Now this is actually before the end game and uh, disturb the ritual <clears throat> will gonna leave us into an endgame phase. Uh, we had like the previous chapter that we need to go by exiting the let me show you. So it's here. Yeah let's go with yeah with this. So we need to go through the exit token and once we go there we will go into the end game of the first chapter. So now it's monster's turn. First one, four, yeah, there is a new monster, the Ktoon. Monster. And now for Kim's. Eight, another monster. Hmm. Are we gonna make it to the end? Oh, we'll see. I really do hope. It's gonna be a little bit hard because we don't have a lot of items. Uh, so Yadithia is the second monster. And uh, he's interesting because, uh, well, first of all, he has a very high attack and just for two stamina. And then if he dies, you will gain an item. And when it's the only monster, it is ethereal. So for now, let's put it here on the monster spawn. Next to Kim. So let's see if this is faster. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So like this. Ah, this is gonna be hard. Seven. Yeah. And it's a horror event. Threat is increased, and it's watchers in the dark. Like this, and watchers in the dark. We sense the eyes upon us. As we move through the chambers, the oppressive stares of unseen lurkers followed. They tracked our every move, as if knowing where we would step before we did. Their presence haunted us wrangling our nerves. We knew they were patiently waiting, seeking the perfect time to fall upon us. Increase monster threat by one for each bound event card. Well, we don't have anything, so that's good. There is no effect. We used uh, the trophy collector, but it's not in play anymore. So first goes Moon Beast. Moon Beast one. One, two, three, and then it pulls Philip next. And that's it. Then Ktoon. Ktoon is an immobile monster, and that means that he will not move, but his effect, his area of effect is the whole map tile. 
just so you see. If a wounded monster exists, restore one health to monsters, otherwise arcane attack explorers. So either he will heal monsters or attack explorers. There are no wounded monsters, all of them are actually just one health, so he will arcane attack all explorers. Hmm. So let's see, so it's three white die, and that is three. And that's enough to hit both of them. So Kim is on one health. Kim is on one health from the last health. And Philip is on two health. Okay, now it's Yadithian. Yadithian has five stamina. And Philip is in range. Oh, yeah. And he can attack two times. Oh, that's gonna hurt. In my group, they always groan the loudest if Ktum was on. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Hmm. Cool. So that's two. And uh, Philip is not hit. One more. That's again two. But. Two is, yeah, it's not a hit because he has a, a reflexive sextant that gives him a will. So that's strange. I mean, I thought that he would die, but we'll get to see the end of it. Okay, now it's our turn. What will I do? What will I do? You know, I can just go away and uh, run away with, uh, with Philip. Huh. Okay, let's try. So one, two, four stamina, and let's try to kill Yadithian hmm? with the layer. Yadithian has an armor of two, so it shouldn't be too too hard. That's four. That's dead. Perfect. And we have Kim on one essence. No, on two essence. Perfect. Okay, Yadithian is dead. That was two stamina, and uh, she has two more stamina, but there's no way that she can... Yeah, one, two, three. She can't attack Toon, she's not in range. Let's go one, two, like this. And now, hmm, Philip. Philip doesn't have any weapon. First, he can move. Hmm. Okay, let's put him here. Now, for six stamina, what can I do? Moonbeast has an armor of four and will of three. So that's impossible to hit by any means. If I don't go away, then Ktoon will definitely hit him. You know what? One, two, three. No, one, two. Okay, so that's... I'm on four stamina. Then one stamina, I'm three stamina. Recharge station and when you activate recharge station, restore one stamina. So that's gonna be cool. So I am now on four stamina and roll a recharge die. Now three stamina back, so now I'm on full stamina. Okay, then I will use 3 stamina to activate the chest and gain 1 essence. So Philip is on 1 essence. And let's go and get some weapons, shall we? 
So I know that it's a rogue rifle. Yeah. And uh, he is a crafter, so he will have a consumable. Um, we already saw the rogue rifle. I'm now going to show all the caloric rares that. Reset spawn and horror rating sliders. I mean, it could be used right now because our horror is two, so it will definitely be triggered. But I don't care. So let's take the rogue rifle. It's unequipped, unfortunately. So for three more stamina, for two stamina, I'm gonna close the door. Like so. And for one more stamina, I will move like this. Okay, that's it. Let's see for horror uh, for spawning. Five. That's nothing. And then once more for Kim. Seven. Yep. Migo. Hmm. Migo. <clears throat> Has an arcane attack, and when he dies, it dies. Its attacker revokes explorer event. And he has two health. That's it. And then for four event, it's on four, and yeah, we trigger that. And what happens? In impatience. So impatience is impatience. Bulky masses, twisting, turning, gnawing, clawing, boiling, churning, eager children, hungry, thirsting, yearning to the point of bursting. With love we kiss all of your creases, lick and brush all of your fleeces. Fly forward now, expand in darkness, slither as one, each other caress. Monsters may move, sorry, may move through units. So it's a passive ability and as long as this is the topmost card, monsters will be able to move through units. Let's see if it has any, if it has any impact on us. So first is a moon beast. Moon beast will go towards Philip, of course, one stamina and with four stamina, will destroy the door. So we'll remove the token and put the close destroy destroy the token. Now Cthun. Cthun will attack explorers. Arcane attack. Huh, that's four. And we will hit both of our explorers. So Philip is on one help. Oh. Philip one help. And Kim is on one essence, so Kim is on one essence. One, 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 one. Well, it's better than zero. And Migo, uh, yeah, we didn't put Migo. It's gonna be as here. And now Migo goes towards Philip. One, two, three. Yeah. Actually, here, monsters will prefer to be adjacent next to an explorer, and he will even attack. Hmm. Yeah, that's a very. Oh, that that really hurt. So Philip is now on zero essence and one health. Oh my God. <sighs> okay, now it's our turn. You know what? Let's go with Kim first. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, she needs one, one stamina. Two. She can't. One, two, three, four, five. But I need one more. Mm, she's gonna die. Now Philip's turn. Because of the reflexive sextant, he moves one. 
and then one, two, and he's out. So that means that he's out and he will go into the end game, but Kim is stuck here. And needless to say, she's gonna get destroyed. Yeah, let's see if even she's gonna get some new monsters on her. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> and even Byaki is gonna join the slaughter. So Byaki, uh, that's the, the older illustration that you see here. But you have the, the new illustrations there. But let's let's get on with it. And for role horror event, yeah, even that. So what happens? Even something. When any explorer closes doors, invoke horror event. Bird, let me out! Let me out! That's some kind of a raging of a lunatic. I'm not gonna spoil that. Uh, Moon Beast is Moon Beast gonna attack? First he pulls two spaces and then he attacks. Two white, two black, bomb. And that's enough. Kim is on one health. Kim zero essence. And now it's Ktoon. And that's it. I mean Ktoon needs to get so she has three. So Ktoon needs to get three or more, and Kim is dead. Three, that's it. Kim is dead. So that's it with uh, for Kim, and we go into the end game because our Philip lived to tell the story. So all of the all of these monsters are gonna be removed. They're not gonna be in play. And uh, yeah, let's first put Kim on zero health. Uh, let's clean up this mess. And now we go into the end game. I'm not sure if you even saw the end game before. So end game for scenario one has a card on its own. Uh, let's go with the chapter like this, and uh, that's the end game. So we have a setup phase. So you see, there are. Uh, okay, I'm going to show you afterwards. So set aside 15 explored tokens. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, then on horror phase, remove explored tokens equal to half the number of ritual spaces rounded up. If we destroy all ritual spaces, we win the game and we lose the game if there are no more explore tokens set aside. So the entry token is here. I'm almost on one health, and zero essence. That's gonna be very, very, very quick. Well, we're gonna see. And uh, Ritual space, you see that's the, the image on the middle bottom, that's the cultist, they're doing the ritual, and each has 5 armor, 6 will, and health equal to explorer count, and it's just one, so, okay, if we hit one, they're dead, so we just need to remember 5 and 6. Uh, just to make things a little bit easier, I'll put one health token. Are we gonna make it? I doubt. Will you be answering the chat? Of course. So that's it. One, two, three, four, five, and then it's our turn. Okay, let me just remove the uh, all 
the monsters that were here. There are no more. There might be new monsters, of course, so we're gonna shuffle that. So what do I do? Hmm. First of all, it's reflexive sextant and it enables me to, to move one space. And bear in mind that I don't have rogue rifle. It's not equipped. But you know this frenetic venom. Hmm. This this might save us. Okay. First move. Move one space. Okay, let's move here. We are on a six stand. I will first activate event space. I really need some good 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 events now. Good, that gives me one essence. I'm not gonna die from the first attack. And what happens? Protective layer. Outlandish moss covered the walls and ground, a sticky greenish substance that solidified into hard crust, capable of withstanding potential cuts. Our bodies did not seem to react to it negatively, and it proved easy enough to remove when necessary. A layer of this on our skins will undoubtedly provide extra protection against the claws and teeth of our enemies. Reduce monsters attack rolls by one. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm not sure how long is this gonna last because we might do another event, but while this is on, it might give us an advantage. So that was for three stamina. I will then use a recharge station for one stamina, but it will also be restored. So I don't lose by activating because of my reflexive sextant. And oh, an empty die. Okay, so for three more stamina, I'm not gonna take any chances. Will I? You know what's the problem? The rogue rifle. I played the game before reading this game. It will be hard. Now I'm scared. No one wants to play with me. Although I'm so excited for this game. Yeah, but take into consideration that you can really lower the difficulty setting a lot. And, uh, but I am now playing as normal. We even had a, a playthrough where I won through a couple of chapters without even using any weapons. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of settings that you can uh, yeah that you can play with. So the rogue rifle is not equipped. I can use three stamina to equip it, but it would be much better if I could maybe gain another item and then equip both of them at the same time but also you know in doing so I'm wasting time okay let's do that let's go one two three yeah okay that's it now if you remember uh, there is a, a horror phase but before the horror phase we need to have the monster spawn phase just one three perfect and also six and four that's these are the, the rating numbers for this chapter for this end game so we rolled a three and that's nothing nothing happens but now it's on five and horror phase remove Explore tokens equal to half the number of ritual spaces. So there are four spaces. Round it up, it's three. So one, two, three. You know what? I will create a pyramid of explore tokens. Yeah, why not? It's gonna look better. Sorry if I'm wasting time, but 
Yeah, that's it. Okay, now it's my turn. First of all, I move one space and then I again activate the chest. Again, one essence. So Philip is now on two essence. Too much. Okay, and uh, well, Rogue Rifle is great. I'm fine with Rogue Rifle. Let's go with the consumable because he's a crafter, he needs to take one. <clears throat> and uh, let's go with an apparel. So, stereographic colors. The first one and the second item is Scryer. So the consumable, the first one, enables me to, to switch position with target unit and the second just swaps uh, equipped item. That might come in handy but not so sure. Uh, the Scryer, look at the top card of any item deck. Well, at least when I equip the Scryer, I will have armor increased by one. So I will take Scryer and I will just trash Stereographic Pelorus like this. For three more stamina, I will activate another chest. So that's why I decided not to equip the Rogue Rifle. Just wait to get some items and then use your inventory. It's gonna be much, much better. So two items. Let's go again with the with the apparel and consumable. Okay, so we have paralyzing sack. That's gonna be a good one. So paralyzing sack and reinforced suit. Okay, so that's much better, I would say. You see that it gives you even a will and armor, and it increases your armor if you're a hit. So that, that's good, I'm gonna take that definitely. And skip target monsters, turn this round. But that's also cool. Just when one stamina, you, you paralyze the monster. So both of these are actually cool. They're, hmm, what to take, what to take. You know what, I'm gonna take Yeah, I'm gonna take Reinforced Suit. Why? Because I will be able to combine Scryer with the Reinforced Suit. Yeah, the Paralyzing Sec. Hmm. I'm gonna thrash that. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put that. And Reinforced Suit is gonna be taken like that. So that's it for me. And I just hope I don't get any monsters because I'm really close to a monster spawn and yeah it's a monster oh. hmm. well you know you're the thin already uh, so this is gonna hurt me a lot I really took a chance and it didn't work out. So he's now gonna be here and he's gonna deal two damage to me almost. Yeah. But okay, that's life. How big did the table need to be to play comfortably? I would say about 130 by 85 centimeters. Uh, you might do some kind of a cheating uh, in a way that I also plan to do that right now in this session uh, because you saw that once I was there I went here and you know that you can have a playing area two by two map tiles but if we have limited space we just play two by one and if needed be so if I would go here to explore the map tile I would rotate the map tile so that it points here and then use uh, use that instead so you can even have a smaller table by doing that kind of a feature just doing a two by one map tile playing area but 
otherwise it's 130 by 85 so that's the, the playing mats the gaming mats that we designed to, to perfectly use the space so that's it so Yadithian uh, came into play and now it's horror phase and you know for a horror phase we need two three so this is gonna go uh, sorry yeah, I, you missed my previous question by the way but I'm afraid I'm too much of this room. no please please just uh, ask away uh, what was it and while you are doing that I will prepare to get my ass kicked by Edithian <clears throat> and look at the screen so he will hit me two times with uh, three white die <clears throat> like so Whoa! one that's that's strange he didn't he missed and another one it's four yeah that's a hit so one health one essence after that Philip one essence that's doable the problem is that Philip is uh, yeah we need to roll for uh, yeah good three that yeah this thing is the only monster uh, gosh you're lucky I'm never that lucky <laughs> yeah uh, Matt prototype I would like to you know I, I thought about that and it shouldn't be a problem because uh, the the production time is about a month but for a very big production order if you're just gonna take one map tile I'm sure they're gonna do in a couple of weeks at most so yeah you're, you're gonna definitely see the <clears throat> the gaming mats in action uh, so that's it. So now it's uh, it's Philip's turn, and I can't hit Yadithian because when this monster is the only monster, it is ethereal. <clears throat> so just need to go away. One because of my reflexive sextant. So with six stamina. I need to think, you know, I need to think. Hmm. One, two. Three, four. So I'm on two stamina. Yeah, <clears throat> okay, now it's better. <clears throat> Now let's recharge station. I need some health. I need something. Perfect. So Philip is in two health. And with two stamina, what can I do? I can go here. One, two. So I will be next to workbench. And that's actually a very good place. But you see this spawn space. Let's see. Let's see about this spawn space. So the number rating now it's look at the pre-purchase stuff and really would like to book player 32. Can this be looked into? Of course. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, just uh, bear with us uh, about um, a week. Yeah, a week or so once we have the numbers and once we increase the logistical solutions. Uh, I think in a week's week and a half time you'll have a project update. Yeah. Six. That's... That's another monster. That's another monster and just next to me. Puopov. Hmm. That is not good. And this little bugger, when he enters play, he immediately goes next to me, like so. And then we remove three more. Uh, this is all gonna be very quickly over, but let's try. And uh, another horror event. Yeah, four. 
revitalizing poison. I'm just gonna show you like this. 3x when any explorer restores essence, arcane attack explorers. Okay, so that's here, and if uh, I will restore essence with Philip, I will put one explorer token here. Okay, then Yadithian, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, four, five. That's it. And Bopoth will hit me two times. So one black and white. Yeah, that's it. I'm on one health. You see what I'm doing all of that? If, if I had that equipped before I entered endgame, everything would be completely different. So the game punishes you. So once more. Yeah, I'm on one health. So Philip is zero essence. Boom. <laughs> what can I do now? I mean, what can I do? Not much. You know, I'm gonna die next turn. But let's go with the bank, shall we? So first, let's use workbench for three stamina. And I will use four consumables. One, two, three, four. Uh, let's just show you. Well, yeah, little, I'm going to do this. Uh, guys, do you like that uh, showing the pictures on the... Or do you prefer just close-up? Pulse grenade. Then uh, Fulginus Flask, and the third one, and the Stygian File. Okay, now let's see if we can come up with something. So, can I win the game? Actually, can I win, uh, survive the round? Ethereal this round. Explorers can target ethereal units this round. So this is actually... that The first one might... Might help me out. And then the Pulse Grenade is also interesting. And Stygian File prevent your health loss from attacks this round. Hmm. Hmm. Wait, I don't see the, the chat. I will need to put the... Uh, like so. Yeah, exactly. It seems so. Uh, but, Workbench has a very interesting effect, and that is, once you draw four cards, you can replace any of them with uh, the cards from your inventory. So I am not gonna use... Maybe I'm not gonna use... What? I like Reflexive Sextant. It helped me out. Mm, frenetic Venom. Hmm. I don't have Essence for Frenetic Venom. So I might first swap Frenetic Venom with one of uh, one of the card pulse grenade let's go with the pulse grenade okay so that's the first step that i'm gonna do okay and then i can take another from the the remaining three and which one is better armillary sphere the, that's cool but i don't care prevent your health loss from attacks this round so that's perfect but even Fulginus Flask is great. So Frenetic Venom is going to be discarded. I'm going to take Stygian File. And Fulginus Flask is interesting. And I'm going to put it back on top. 
an armillary sphere. Just gonna be discarded. <clears throat> okay, and then for the next, uh, for the last uh, effect of workbench, I finally get to to equip all of my items. <laughs> yeah. So scryer and reinforced suit. So now I have armor plus two and will plus one because of that. So this is cool. Uh, sextant and two of those. Okay, let me let me try one health. What can I do? Let's use pulse grenade. Yeah, fuck it. So for two stamina. I will use Pulse Grenade to target Yedithian so that I'm gonna attack him but also attack Buopoth. So 2-2 two, two, and then 3. So 2-2 two, two, first for Yedithian. Yeah, and that's a hit. So Yedithian is dead. And I get one essence. Okay, then Buopoth. Three white. And that's it. Yeah, Buopoth is hit and he goes back to the spawn space. And he's on one health. Okay, that was good. And I'm still. Will you hit the ritual guys too? Well, I would love to, but just don't have time. Just now at this turn, after I activated workbench, I have my rogue rifle activated and equipped. Because before that, there was just no way to even hit them. Because they have armor of 5 and will of 6. And it's just impossible to do any damage to them. So only now I can do anything. Oh, the grenade. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, it was like here. Exactly. Yeah, very good. Uh, very good eye. And what was the damage? Does somebody remembers? Was it five? I think it was five. Yeah, if nobody objects, let's say that it... Yeah, let's say that it was this one so yeah yeah that's a very good call the grenade killed Yadithian one cultist and Buopoth so that was a very good grenade uh, now with one more health uh, one more, more stamina mm, what can I do well the only thing I can do is move a little bit here it will not make any difference actually Bopoth will still hit me two times. So, but it's gonna be much harder to hit me now because I have now four, armor of four. So I'll take my chance, chances. Yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, so Philip is now finally over with his round. So that was a very, very interesting round. Okay, first monster spawn. Six is a rating. God damn it. Okay. Deep one. Yeah, that's it guys. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Uh, playing with you, but you know, so that's it. And then uh, the horror phase, we remove two of them. And now first Buopoth, he attacks. Huh, let's see, maybe we will. So one, one, so that's fine. I didn't get hit. Good, once more. Three, I didn't get hit. Good, so the scryer and reinforced suit helped a lot. Now deep one, he attacks uh, two times uh, with three black die. Hmm, that's gonna be a little bit more harder. That's five, that's a hit. 
Yeah. I'm on one hell. Zero essence. But I have an increased armor by one this round because of reinforced suit. So he needs now to get five. Yeah. <laughs> Five. Yeah, that's one, two. Boom. I'm dead. <laughs> Quite simple. <clears throat> so yeah, it's been a pleasure uh, playing and dying with you. It could be, you know, just for example. So let's say that we survive this round. We could kill two cultists in one go with uh, just using the rogue rifle because rogue rifle really hits hard so just yeah that would be and oh it wouldn't yeah we would kill one cultist but you know the thing is i came into endgame ill prepared i didn't have any equipped weapon so that was the consequence. I mean, the game punishes you for uh, those kinds of tactic tactical things. We really uh, rushed through through those uh, three chapters, and it was good to see them uh, just uh, close very very quickly. But the downside is that once you're in the end game, these explore tokens go fast, very very fast so there are only four of them so even if i killed one there were three so that means even two would be removed it would be very hard so in order to win that game win the the end game for scenario one you need to hit them at round two you need to start hitting them but i took a couple of rounds just trying to get my way past uh, the workbench to get the rogue rifle and a couple of more consumables. Would it be better if when I was here to just use the inventory to get the rogue rifle and just start attacking them? Maybe, maybe. There, there could be options, but uh, that's that's the one we, we went for. Yeah, he's dead, so let, let him be like this, like a fallen warrior. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, do ask uh, now. Another thing also what would be possible is to just hit... How come you didn't use file? Because for file you need to... to Come on, camera, do your job. To stamina. I didn't have that. I wanted to use the, the bomb. Because you remember, the bomb killed the Edithian, the cultist, and damaged Blopoth. So that's a lot of things that, things that happened. I was a bit unlucky with the deep one. If he didn't spawn, then... Uh, because you saw that Bopoth couldn't even touch me. So if Bop, uh, if Deep One didn't kill me, actually, it, it would be quite different. Quite different. But that's that's how it goes. Yeah, maybe next time. So that's it then uh, for, for this playthrough. I hope you had a good time. Uh, of course, feel free to, to ask in the, in the comments or whatever, uh, whenever on any kind of social networks or Kickstarter. I wasn't there at the beginning. Could you show us maybe some content if you didn't already? I bought the premium version. You have some stuff unpacked in the room that you could give us a shot at. Uh, from the premium, uh, some, some monster illustrations, I guess. Uh, the new... Um, not, I don't have uh, like a, like a premium box. The prototype is only like a core game, <clears throat> so I can't give you any physical premium content. I could give you. Uh, let me try to find if I can come up with something. Um, where is? 
Uh, just give me a second. illustrations uh, from the premium uh, game so this is one illustration that you might see maybe it's a little bit too glossy so that's from the premium content and uh, two scenarios that you're gonna receive in the premium content are very very interesting uh, it's not just a horror story it has some kind of a would say like psychological thriller to some to some to some extent. So that would be the first chapter of that. So you you might see it's really strange. And uh, the good thing about that that it's non-linear. So you would see from the previous uh, the first scenario that I that I played. It always starts with one, then two, three, all the way to the end game. But the premium, one of the premium scenarios, will have uh, will have a non-linear scenario. So it will give you options to go to either like three or four. This is also all part uh, of the premium new scenario made by uh, Sebastian Jacobino really cool guy from Argentina this is the hall and that scenario is also connected to the interactive game that I developed uh, just some kind of a puzzle game uh, if you watched and uh, in the on our one of our project updates it, it was there but yeah and uh, also the last one Yeah, we put a lot of effort in, into that and uh, we want to create a very immersive experience and uh, also the way that you play the game, <clears throat> like I played it now in normal mode and it was it was tough. I made some uh, errors, of course, but uh, you know it was tough and it's not just a, a horror game, it becomes some kind of a tactical game, but you can change that. And uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. I didn't even show you this one. I, there's no need for that. So you see those sliders over there. So you see the number seven. So you start with number seven. And if you roll seven or higher, then you will spawn a monster. But if you roll lower than that, you will lower the slider. So this means that uh, although the game has dice, uh, the luck is quite negated because uh, you might have luck a couple of uh, rolls, but uh, it evens out with uh, with these sliders. Uh, the easier game is you don't reduce the sliders. So if you are on seven and you roll, for example, a six or a five, you stay at seven. So this feature completely changes uh, the chance, the, the randomness, and it makes for a much easier game, much easier. And then, yeah, exactly. And it's it really helps you out because then it becomes more like an immersive, like an adventure, horror adventure. Uh, one of the things also that you can uh, play in the game is, you see the, the die has a zero. If you you treat it. Uh, we want to trade items with other players. Oh, of course, yeah, for a stamina point, maybe. Yeah, you can do that. <clears throat> so you need to be adjacent to each other, and uh, you initiate the trade. Where is Kim? So let's say that she's here. 
initiate the trade and uh, you trade any number of items with each, each other. That's very cool. One of the uh, core aspects of the game is, so let's say that Kim's here, uh, here, here is Philip and here is chess space. So once you activate, Philip activates the chess space and gains one item. He can immediately, as a free action, give item to Kim. So let's put him there. So that's a very cool thing uh, in order to give you, uh, you know, the co uh, monster, this one. And uh, as I was saying, if you play with 0 being 0 and not 10, you decrease the difficulty by 10%. And I mean, 10 is a lot. So just with small uh, feature using 0 is 0, 10% less. And then if you have the, the ratings, you don't uh, lower them, then you can have an even easier game. But, you know, you need to have some kind of uh, intensity. So don't go overboard with lowering the difficulty too much. Uh, what else uh, for the co-op? So you know, uh, as I've done in one instance, once I used the chapter space to activate the chapter space, Kim helped with the, her essence. And as you've seen in the game, I didn't use essence to increase attack rolls although you can do that as well. But each time that you spend Essence, any adjacent explorer can help you with that. So let's say that Philip is being attacked by a deep one. So he doesn't want to lose health. Kim can pay with her Essence in order to prevent health loss to Philip. So Essence is a very very important, oh, I wouldn't call it currency, I, it's not a pool, like some kind of a power, power pool that you can use not just for yourself, but even for your explorers. So that's a, a good thing to, to know what you can do with Essence. Called he goes, she goes, he goes, she goes, me goes. <laughs> Dancing training. Oh, nice. Uh, there are a couple of, of course, a lot of new monsters. Can I show you some other monsters that I didn't show before? Do dead players revive between chapters? Uh, well, Actually, we played, we cheated a little bit because it would be even harder. Once the explorer dies, then they control the monsters. So that means that once Kim died, then she would control the monsters. And it would be, well, it wouldn't be much of a difference, to be honest, because all of these monsters, the Adithian and Buapoth, the deep one, uh, would, was just... Uh, doing their thing and attacking. I missed the beginning, sorry for this question. Oh, no, it's fine. Uh, did I answer uh, all the questions? I, I think that there was one question that I didn't uh, didn't answer, not sure. So please uh, just uh, ask again if I didn't touch on that answer. But yeah, that's about uh, it for the dead explorers. They will control the monsters. They would be able to even uh, close the doors like if the first monster would be a deep one and he would spawn from here like for the first action he would go here and just ha 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 close the doors here so you would uh, need to go I was asking if you're playing the music I just bought yes and yeah that's the the soundtrack in the background made by Mladen Konecki I'd like to know what was the uh, the inspiration. Hmm. Well, I would say that it started with Arkham Horror, but then it, uh, it changed, it, it altered itself from, from that kind of a 
to a dungeon crawler. There's a couple of games that that inspired that, but I would say if I can pick one, it would be Arkham Horror. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Just in time before 11 p.m. I'm not sure about your time zone, but that's it for now. It it was a pleasure, really, dying with you on your survey poll when you ask what kind of game people would like to see next. Did you get a majority? Yes. Uh, adventure was first, and then the RPG. And that's actually, hmm. yeah, I'm gonna tell you, yeah, I, I, I don't mind. The thing is that I'm very obsessive about this game, but uh, there is something else that I want to create. And once I started creating a game, I first envisioned one game, but then due to all the, all the problems and difficulties, in doing that with the components and, and the rules, I downgraded that logic and here is Machina Arcana. But uh, I'm working on another game as well, that is like an adventure game. <clears throat> it has some kind of an RPG elements into it as well. So I'm really spending uh, some of the time that I don't have in also developing that game, but it's really engrossing because it really fills me with uh, with joy and uh, and passion i might have some well no no i'm, I'm not gonna do any kind of uh, demonstration before uh, all the boxes are delivered uh, yeah i do create all of the systems and rules alone but uh, i have help uh, with uh, all, from a lot of people from a lot of people that help me with uh, you know, just uh, with the grammar and the syntax and uh, just with the beta testers that are helping me with polishing the rules. Uh, Ulrich and Issa and uh, Danny and Dave and uh, Becky and uh, yeah, a couple of these uh, guys really helped me out in just making the game as polished as possible. So we have two more minutes. Yeah, two more minutes. Uh, let's be punctual and uh, end the stream in 11 p.m. Yeah, I really enjoyed this uh, this thingy with uh, with the items and uh, monsters. Although <laughs> you would see, you would need to see my setup with with the mouse and keyboard and laptop and just trying to. Uh, to use both of my hands to juggle between the, the screens and uh, to make it work. But it worked, it, it worked fine. There was a kind of a delay because I need to drag and drop the, the items, find them and drag and drop them. But it worked. And yeah, it was very way better than first time I streamed. Cool, yeah. Yeah, because I really don't like uh, every time that you need and it really kills the immersion. So it's much better to just be able to do like this. And now that's the chapter that you're currently on. Some kind of a, like a video game. You see the, the health to health and uh, essence bars. You don't have the, the stamina, but that's straightforward. You need to put up the chat on your phone so you wouldn't have to display everything. But it's nice to see uh, the, the chat on the stream. It feels that I'm not like mad and just talking to myself. There is somebody online. I'm not alone. Okay, 11 is, has passed. It's been a pleasure and uh, all the best. See you soon.